Egyptians don't know what Egyptian food is. Yeah, They'd be like, what's your food? They say, oh, we make lasagna. <laughs> 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 they take, a, they take, yeah, they take Italian yeah. food. When I was on set was the first time I had actual proper Egyptian food. What kind of food is yeah. uh, What's it? Uh, Koshiri. Koshiri. Did you just say Khashoggi? Oh my God. Refilling myself. Okay. Thank you. Do you want some more? Sure. It's yeah. not. It's, I love it. I love the man. You got it. Dude, that's a crazy amount of sugar. Bro, I'm Sudani. This is what we do. I think as we got into the season and we kind of, you know, tweaked what Rami was really trying to pursue, right? For the first time, just he's like, you know what? Maybe I don't want to be good. I just want to be good at something. Can you pursue that kind of financial goal or that kind of uh, th that idea of even like that pursuit of the American dream yeah. and still hold on to your moral compass, like if that becomes number one. And I, and I feel like that's really what's, what's on the spotlight this season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, any objective in life other than if someone is just gonna live in the masjid and pray and fast and dhikr and whatnot, that they're gonna have to engage in something, something of the world. And the prophet himself, the motto obviously for our religion, he wasn't uh, monastic in that way, he's engaging. And so <clears throat> the constant um, balancing act between the inner world and the outer world, the unseen world and the seen world, is just the balance of you know a walking person going from the right to the left and the right to the left. Right, yeah. but, but I feel like that gets lost. <laughs> really, that gets lost really quickly and like, I, you know, that, and again, like, I think, like, when you are leaving your home country and you're kind of in a place where you're kind of trying to figure out, yeah, how do you make that living for yourself and, again, make it worth it, yeah. can you hold on to who you are? Where I grew up, it felt as though, like, like poverty was a property of being Muslim, almost, you know? Mm. And that the moment you begin to transcend um, that poverty, it's like you're actually moving away from Islam, you know? And I think tussling with that, is, um, is a thing that I think we all have to do, you know? And, and I think, you know, as now we get into the third season, the, the, this core thing underneath what we've been exploring, I think, has, has been this, this financial anxiety that is really present. Like, Grace, like, how has that anxiety been part of your family, even, like, like growing up? Like, how, how did that affect you? Yeah, no, absolutely. So my, my parents were immigrants from Taiwan, and they came here for the American dream, and I was really blessed to be raised in uh, a lot of, you know, with in an upper-middle-class home, so money was not a worry for me. Mm. But that actually led to me to search for meaning and mm. actually led me to find Islam. Mm. Because it's like, okay, is this the point of life, is just to make as much money as you can and you're done, and you, right. you know, can you and take your toys with you. You can't do that. Right. Um, so there has to be more. Well, it's so funny too, growing up like with money but without faith, then you find faith. It's really funny though when you grow up with faith and not money, because then you're like, well, where's the money? Like, I guess you're like, <laughs> and then you almost kind of like forget about the faith, you know, because you're kind of like, well, we believe, but it didn't come. And then and it almost, it's like money becomes the fixation. Yeah. But then money has become your religion. Well, on a, on a, yeah, and I think that's kind of almost like what we see happen with this family. And yeah. Then, you know, right. I mean, like, how, how is it like for you growing up? I think, well, growing up in the hood, it was, you know, you're speaking about how you had like the stability to explore faith. And I think because of the instability, a lot of people drew towards Islam. And it made a lot of sense because, you know, there had to be something more than what our situation was, yeah. you know? There had to be something more than the violence and like, you know, and the instability and the mental illness. And, and you know, that's all I think results of poverty, of mm. course. And so, you know, seeing the way Rami's family struggles in this episode, um, is a thing I understand profoundly, and him going to to any end, you know what I mean, to make um, things happen for his family, is uh, is a difficult thing to critique or question when you don't kind of share that kind of same struggle as as yeah. him and his family. So, I think I watched a lot of people do um, do a lot of things, of course, to to just free themselves from the situation of being in uh, in a, in in a community like mine. What was it like for, for you know, for you, 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 you know, just in how your family thinks about this stuff and processes it? My people's situation was obviously different. We didn't immigrate here, but we're brought here as slaves, so. The, f which so, was about money. Yeah, which was about money, just we weren't the ones making it. Yeah. So <laughs> it was like the, the, the experience of, one, not having a, a home. So it's like, I'm, 
it, it's almost as if to say it was like this was like an extended business trip for mm. some communities. Like mm. we have a home, but we're here away from home to do a job. That business trip idea, and, and mm. you know, of, of uh, did your family send money back home? You know, like yeah. we were, you know, you're like you're right. always sending money back home. You're always like you're trying to like at least growing up, we would be saving money for people in Egypt. And then we'd also be trying to like save money just to talk to them, right? Mm. Like we had the phone card game. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I remember one time my dad bought a stack of phone cards from this dude and it turns out like all the codes had been used. Oh, yeah. This rocked our family. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we That's were like, this is like, and now we're going back through Patterson. We're How trying to were find they? the guy. I don't, I mean, look, when I was a kid, it felt like we lost a million dollars. It was like $2.50 yeah. for 30 minutes and then $5 for an hour. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like you're saving money to send back home. You're saving money to even communicate with home, mm. to communicate with everything you've known. Like mm -hmm. everything has a price tag. Yeah. Absolutely. And then, so then it's at a certain point you're like, oh, I'm, I think I'm thinking more about the price tag than the, the reason why you even right. want the thing. Right. You know? Right. And I feel like that's so baked into the anxiety of like how but we that, grew up. But that, that's the key when you start asking, what is money and so on? and Obviously, the dollar doesn't have an intrinsic value, and then we even think about gold, and it's like more real. It would be so much better if like you could smell a hundred dollar bill and like run faster. <laughs> like if it like at least like that would be like if you were just like Shh, and then just like <laughs> we're able to do something right, it would right. be so like I'd be like okay I get why <laughs> right, right why this is worth it why, why we're doing this that was a hundred dollar sprint like yeah, that yeah, was, that's... <laughs> right, like that was premium like, wow. dollar right there. Yeah. But yeah, but so what we're what we're seeking, like we're talking about people get so involved with the means, they uh, like I'm doing this for my family, but they never see their family yeah. because they're chasing the means yeah. by which to be with yeah. their family. Never even know their family. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a very dangerous and easy way to stray off of even the path that we've laid for ourselves. But also be even even with how I think we're framing this through through Rami's perspective, is it possible in the setup right now? To, to keep your morals and, and do that? Yeah. And like, what does it look like to go gray? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a, a, a story. I remember I was a young father and we had no money and we didn't have diapers. So I remember I had this like little check. I can't remember, it was some sort of like rebate check for like, it was like $7 or something. I didn't even have a bank account. I was broke, 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 broke. And uh, I'll go to the grocery store and see if I can like cash this $7 check so I can get some diapers. And, uh, and I couldn't because I didn't have, whatever, I couldn't. So I'm standing outside on the corner and um, there's this, <laughs> this is a profound moment for me. There was this man and he had this um, cart like overflowing with cans, right? And I was like, I want to take his cans. <laughs> Like, wow. I, and I thought to myself, I just had a thought about robbing an old man. Wow. For, and it's funny because you, cans. yeah, for empty soda cans, you know what I'm saying? But in that moment, I was like, oh, I, I see how you could get to that place and how quickly um, the the moral framework just yeah. dissolves like a, like a sugar cube yeah. and, and water. Yeah. It just, and, and it's not for nothing, you know, it's not just um, out of just weakness, it's, it's uh, oftentimes, I would say most times a consequence of love, mm. you know. Mm.